And so when you look at the world of vaccines, you know, most vaccines that we have are for bacteria or viruses. We don't have any approved vaccines for use uh, against parasites like the malaria parasite. So when you get bitten by a mosquito, they transmit a small, um, sort of looks like a whisker-shaped um, parasite called a sporozoite, and these go pretty quickly to your liver. And for the next seven days, you don't know that you have any infection whatsoever. And after seven days, they leave the liver and they start to infect your red blood cells. And this is when you get the disease we call malaria. We think that directing an immune response to, in this case, the liver, where the malaria parasite lives after you are bitten by a mosquito, is really critical for making a long-lasting, durable vaccine that might this is a study that was done in mice, but we're hoping to be able to translate this um, maybe one day to uh, make a vaccine that could be, protect humans. A lot of vaccines that have been tried, they don't have this problem of tissue-specific immunity. But we're realizing that not just for malaria, but for other infections, tissue-specific immunity could be the key. The numbers of people who are infected and who die from malaria uh, have, have sort of gone up and down. There was uh, more than three million deaths thought to occur in the early 90s. And fortunately, with the use of bed nets and um, insecticides and treatment, this number is now under a, certainly under a million per year. But there are hundreds of millions of infections that happen every year. In some ways, malaria is a barometer for other diseases and, and the health and of your, of your um, public health system in general and so when you improve when you provide better care that re reduces the rate of malaria you're probably improving the delivery of other kinds of care at the same time so we're really lucky in Seattle that we have the ability to test vaccines not just in mice um, and in other animal models but we're also able to test them in humans, which is, after all, the most critical step to taking them to a larger population that really needs them. And we do this at the Seattle Malaria Clinical Trial Center. This is a center that is... Yeah, yeah. And birth all of them and then sorbitol them. Uh, yeah. Mostly rings. Um, yeah. Is this all the culture you have left? No, yeah, no I'm actually curious. Yeah. Liquid nitrogen, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh no, I haven't actually. I'm gonna, gonna put them in the same box. The the box should, uh, one of the tubes, and I make sure that it is okay. And if it isn't, then you gotta make. Do we have enough? I was talking about making uh, making more samples. particle-mediated epidermal delivery device, or PMED, mm -hmm. and it's designed to fire DNA, and it ends up being, uh, the tube turns white because you've stripped all the gold out. There it's going go. out through the barrel. Okay. Okay. So these cartridges, or carts, get loaded into a revolver. You can load up to uh, 12 different cartridges. They can either have the same vaccine or different vaccines. Um, other methods of delivering DNA typically are quite painful mm -hmm. and that's one of the main advantages. The other main advantage is that these cartridges are pretty uh, stable. Uh, you don't have to refrigerate them. So Brad, can you say